Joining us now live, Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, Senator, good morning. First of all, we hope your you and your family are doing well. Good morning, Ed. Yes, we are. We're strong and healthy. I'm working at home. Heidi's working at home. The girls are doing distance learning at, at home. And so we're sheltering in place along with the rest of, the, of America to make it make it through this pandemic. Let's talk. Uh, that's great to hear. And let's talk a little bit about the economy and we'll get into a whole bunch of subjects. Axios uh, reporting this morning that a growing number of CEOs are saying privately in calls to the president and others that they're concerned that, that if there's not at least a plan to start opening things up in this economy by, say, May, there's going to be a catastrophe and it's going to be hard to turn this around. Where are you on a fourth economic stimulus package, and what would be your priorities in there, sir? Well, there's no doubt that there is going to have to be a tr tradition, uh, transition to everyone going back to work. And then the question is, when When can we do so safely? Uh, right now, we're dealing with, with two crises simultaneously. We, we have, on the one hand, a public health crisis, and that is the coronavirus global pandemic. And, and, and that is serious. The death toll is growing. And, 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 and we are taking serious and unprecedented steps to try to constrain the, the spread of that virus and to protect human lives. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we've got an economic crisis. And the economic crisis is devastating. It is the consequence of the government policies that have been put in place at the federal level, but also especially at the state and local levels uh, of sheltering in place that have had the effect of shutting down millions of small businesses, of crippling I industries, and, and we've seen over 10 million people unemployed in just the last couple of weeks. We have got to address that economic crisis as well. I think the timing of when we move from the, the shelter-in-place pl protocols to mm -hmm. people going back to work, it's going to depend on what's happening with the crisis. It's going to depend upon the data that are coming in in terms of the number of people who are infected, the number of people who are hospitalized, the, the, num the number of deaths we are seeing. And the more we flatten the curve, the more we get those numbers to go down, yeah. the closer we'll get to everyone getting back to work. And, and, and the emergency relief bill that we passed Congress week before last was designed, it was $2 trillion designed essentially as a bridge loan, as an emergency loan mm -hmm. to help people get through this period to, to, to where we can be beyond it and, and, and beginning the recovery. Well, talk about how it's working, because there's, the president is touting the third package and saying the small businesses are getting what they need. His critics are saying, you know, the phones are tied up. Some of the banks are not all on board with that. So I wonder what you're hearing from your constituents on that in a broader context of what is happening in your state right now? Because when we talk about the economic pain and the health pain and the far too high number of deaths in America, over 100 uh, in your state, the Wall Street Journal has a front page story, as you probably know this morning, saying that there's two punches for Texas. You have this yeah. health crisis of people dying and then this oil shock, sir. Yeah, a absolutely. So, so let me take those one at a time. In terms of how the emergency relief bill does, we don't know yet. It, it, we just passed it. It was just signed into law. But it, it's going to take a couple of weeks at, at a minimum for that money to start to be really effective. You've got the individual checks that every American who makes $100,000 a year or less is going to get in the mail, $1,200 per, per adult, $500 per child. That means a, a couple who makes under $150,000 a year with three kids will get a check for three thousand nine hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. That's real money for a family. If, if, if you just got laid off, if you're worried about how you're going to pay your rent, that is emergency relief to a lot of Americans who are hurting. Those checks haven't arrived yet, but they are expected. The Treasury Department says they will arrive in the next couple of weeks. So that'll start to make a difference for a lot of people. The small business loans, we have appropriated three hundred and seventy seven billion dollars for emergency small business loans administered through the Small Business Administration, which in turn uses local banks, community banks to administer those loans. They just started taking applications on Friday. So we're two days into the program. We don't mm -hmm. really know. Are there going to be bureaucratic hurdles? Of course, any gigantic government program is going to have bureaucratic hurdles. Any two trillion dollar bill is yeah. going to have significant problems. But those small business loans are designed so that if you are a restaurant owner or you own a bar or a nail salon or a hardware store or a movie theater, uh, any small business with 500 employees or fewer, you can go to your local and community bank 
you can get an emergency loan. And if you use that loan to pay for payroll and salary, to pay for rent or mortgage on your business or to pay for utilities, that loan is entirely forgivable. It becomes a grant. Mm -hmm. And that applies even if you've already furloughed your employees. You can hire them back and, and use those forgivable loan proceeds to pay paychecks. That's right. designed to help get millions of people back in their job, back getting a paycheck. And what about we the energy sector? We have to see, that's sector. gonna take weeks, if not a couple of months to see how that operates. Now you mentioned rightly, Texas has a yeah. second economic catastrophe hitting us at the same time, which is the collapse of energy prices. And, and, and a significant part of that is driven by the coronavirus crisis. Another significant part of that is driven by Saudi Arabia and Russia that have begun flooding the market to cause the, 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 the price to plummet. Uh, last week, last Friday, I flew to D.C. to meet with the president, to meet with the CEOs of, of major energy companies. Mm -hmm. and we spent two hours talking about how we can combat that to prevent the Saudis and Russians from bankrupting all of the Texas producers, all of the U.S. energy producers. I think the keys to that are going to be, number one, putting real pressure on the Saudis. I have talked with the Saudis multiple times. The president's talked with the Saudis to stop waging economic warfare on the United States. And, mm -hmm. and I'm hopeful, based on their commitments, they're going to pull back and end that effort. But secondly, and this is what we spent a lot of time Friday talking about, we need to make sure that the energy companies that are facing this massive attack, particularly the small independent energy companies, yeah. have access to capital, that they're not frozen out of being able to get a line of credit to, to stay alive because the objective of the Saudis and Russians was to bankrupt them all and put them out of business. Yeah. That would be really bad for the national security and economic security of our country. Big issues ahead, no doubt about it. Senator Ted Cruz, we appreciate your time this morning and best to your family and days ahead. Take care. God you bless. Got your dad coffee mug as well. All right. Appreciate that. <laughs>